y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by today I'll be showing y'all how I made these 14 fun quick and easy st. Patrick's Day theme minis for my tiered tray st. Patrick's Day is one of my favorite holidays so of course I had to throw together a little something this may be my only st. Patrick's Day theme video this year but if you want to see more let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can come up with I hope y'all enjoy the video and if you do Please give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into DIY number one. For this project, I used a package of these foam dice that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave all of the dice three good coats, letting them dry completely between coats. Next, I used these wooden letters from Dollar Tree. I picked out the letters L, C, and K and used folk art acrylic paint in the color vivid orange and gave the front of the letters two coats. Next, I used one of the small shamrocks from this pack of wooden shamrocks that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used apple barrel paint in the color new shamrock and gave the front of the shamrock two good coats. To give these pieces a worn and weathered look, I used Krylon chalky finished antiquing wax in the color dark vintage. Starting with the dice and using a foam brush with a little bit of the antiquing wax, I lightly distressed around all of the edges and in the center of each side of the dice. Since I didn't want the distressing to be dark, I immediately took a paper towel and wiped off any of the excess wax. I then repeated this step to distress the front side of all three letters and the shamrock. Here is how all the letters in the shamrock turned out once I had them distressed. And here is how the foam dice turned out after I had them distressed. I used hot glue to attach all four dice together to create one big block. So these dice are from Dollar Tree and if you've worked with many of their products, you already know that they are usually not all the same size. So you will have to turn them and arrange them in a way that they fit together the best way they can. Then to finish off this project, I used more hot glue to attach one of the letters to the front of each of the dice. I attached the L to the first block on the top of the stack, followed by the shamrock on the second block, then the C on the first bottom block, and finally the K on the last block. I think this little word block turned out exactly how I had it envisioned. Moving right along to DIY number two. For this project, I'm going to be giving these mini garden stones that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby a bit of an upgrade. I started by removing the large green glitter from the inside of the hat. First, I used my heat tool to help loosen up the glue that was adhering the glitter. Then I took a flathead screwdriver and used it to easily scrape out all of the glitter. I repeated this step to remove the glitter from the inside of the shamrock on the other stone as well. Next, I took Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted the band on the hat. Then I took folk art brushed metal paint in the color brushed gold and painted the buckle. I used apple barrel paint in the color Kelly Green to paint the shamrocks and the vines on both of the stones. Here you can see that I did go ahead and use a tiny paintbrush and painted the letters with the ink chalk paint to refresh them. Next, I used the light green moss out of this moss collection pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby to fill in the hat and the shamrock on both of the stones. I really wanted the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree, but neither one of my stores had any in stock. I used hot glue to adhere the moss to the inside of the shamrock by applying hot glue in a light, even layer inside. I then placed enough of the moss inside the shamrock to completely fill it up and then pressed it down inside to form the shape. Once I had the shamrock completely filled, I took some scissors and trimmed up the moss so that it was nice and neat and I paid close attention around the outside edges so that the shape of the shamrock was clearly visible. I then repeated this step to add the moss to the inside of the hat on the other stone and this project was complete. I absolutely love how these stones turned out and now they fit in perfectly with my other decor. On to DIY number three. For this project, I used one of these gold four by six metal picture frames from Dollar Tree. I started by removing both pieces of glass and set them aside. 
I then used folk art brushed metal paint in the color brushed gold and painted the frames with two coats so that it would have a more of a true gold color and not be so shiny. Next, I just traced off a leprechaun silhouette that I found online onto a piece of paper and colored it in with a black sharpie on the front and back. You could also just print one out if you wanted to do that. I then carefully cut out the silhouette and colored around the edges with the black sharpie so that none of the white of the paper was showing. Then to finish up this quick little project, I placed the leprechaun in the middle of the two glass pieces and placed them back into the gold frame and that was it for this one. I think this one turned out so cute. I absolutely love leprechauns. This one is one of my favorites from today's video. Let's move on to DIY number four. For this project, I used some of these letter tiles from Dollar Tree. I picked out the letters to spell out Irish, but since there was only one I in the package, I replaced the I with a V and flipped it over so that I would have a blank slate. I also picked out the letters to spell out Lucky and used the letter Q for the letter U and flipped it over so that I would have a blank slate to work with. Next, I used 12 of the Tumbling Tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I used folk art paint in the color bright green to paint four of the blocks front and back. Then I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint four more of the blocks. Lastly, I used folk art paint in the color vivid orange to paint the last four blocks. Once all the blocks were completely dry, I used two of each color to create a set of six blocks to represent the Irish flag. I used hot glue and attached two of the green blocks together, then added two of the white blocks followed by two of the orange blocks. This is what the piece looked like once I had all six blocks glued together. I then repeated this step to make a second set of blocks. This part is completely optional, but I took a finger sander and scuffed up the paint on both sets of blocks, paying extra attention to the four sides to give them a worn and weathered look. I then took a baby wipe and removed all the excess dust from sanding. Here is how the sets looked once I was happy with the distressing. Next, I took one of the St. Patrick's Day necklaces from Dollar Tree and cut off two of the smaller shamrocks. I then used apple barrel paint in the color Kelly Green and gave the front of both shamrocks three good coats. For the Lucky Block set, I used hot glue to attach the L to the block then I attached the Y to the other end so that I could evenly space out the other three letters and attach them to the block with hot glue using a ruler edge to keep them straight. To finish off this block, I took one of the shamrocks and hot glued it to the empty tile to represent the letter U. Then I repeated these steps to add the word Irish to the other block set and this one is finished. I love the way these turned out. Today's video is part of the monthly minis challenge hosted by Corey over at Crafted by Corey. This month's theme is Spring, Mardi Gras, or St. Patrick's Day. I chose to go with the St. Patrick's Day theme since it's one of my favorite holidays and I'm of Irish descent. If you want even more inspiration for your Spring, Mardi Gras, or St. Patrick's Day tiered trays, be sure to check out the playlist linked in the description box below. Also, if you haven't checked out Corey's channel, I would definitely recommend doing so. She is incredibly talented and has such cute DIYs. Her channel will be linked below as well. Okay, now that I've said that, let's get started with DIY number five. For this project, I used one of these tinsel leprechaun hats from Dollar Tree. I started by carefully removing the gold buckle from the hat. Next, I removed all the tinsel. I found that removing the bottom part of the hat made it a lot easier to remove the tinsel from around the brim. Once I had the tinsel removed, I took some wire cutters and cut off all the plastic pieces that were sticking out around the outside. Next, I used some red heart yarn in the color medium thyme that I had in my stash. I started wrapping the yarn around the brim of the hat by tying the end of the yarn in a double knot on the back side of the base and worked my way around the entire brim, tightly wrapping the yarn until I got all the way back around and then tied it in a double knot to secure it. I used mainstays yarn in the color black to create the hat band. Again, I double knotted the yarn on the back side of the hat 
and wrapped the yarn around the hat until I got to about the fourth nodule where I cut off one of the plastic pieces and secured it with a double knot on the back side. This is how the hat looked once I had the band fully wrapped. I did have to go ahead and go back with a little bit of hot glue to help hold the yarn to the ridge so that there wasn't a gap. I used more of the medium time yarn to finish wrapping the hat all the way to the top using hot glue as needed. For the buckle of the hat, I used some Yarn B yarn in the color Honey that I had left over from a previous project and wrapped the entire buckle using hot glue as needed to secure it in place. Next, I used a dab of hot glue on each of the buckle corners to attach it back to the front of the hat. Since I'm a little extra, I took one of the shamrocks from this mini icons pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used Waverly chalk paint in the color moss to paint the front and back. Once it was completely dry, I placed a small dab of hot glue on the stem and placed it on the side of the hat right under the gold buckle. I went back and added another dab of hot glue to the top of the shamrock and held it in place until the glue set up. I then took one of the mini shamrocks from this pack of shamrock jewels that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to adhere it to the center of the wooden shamrock and this one is finished. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. Moving right along to DIY number six. For this project, I used one of these St. Patrick's Day towels from Dollar Tree. I started by folding the towel in half and took one of these square wood planks from Dollar Tree and placed it down onto the towel along the folded seam and traced around it with a pen. I then took some sharp scissors and cut out the square leaving the towel folded in half. Once I had the piece of towel cut, I took and folded it so that I had the pattern sides facing each other and the two white sides on the outside. Next, I took some hot glue and ran a line along the edge of the towel on the side with the shamrocks and then folded the other side down on top, pinching the sides together to secure them in place. I then repeated this step on the other side, leaving only the bottom open. I used some more hot glue to close the sides of the bottom, but left a small opening. After the hot glue had set up, I flipped the pillow right side out through the opening so that I had some straight and clean seams on the side of the pillow. I did use a pair of scissors to help push out the four corners since the opening was a bit too small for my hand. Here is how the pillow looked once I had it turned right side out and the corners pushed out. I used some cotton balls from Dollar Tree to stuff the pillow. Instead of just placing the full cotton balls inside the pillow, I went ahead and fluffed up each of the cotton balls before placing them inside and continued to add more cotton until I was happy with the fullness. You could use polyfill, paper, or plastic bags to fill the pillow, but I was using cotton balls for another project and they were handy. Once I was happy with the fullness of the pillow, I folded in the edges of the openings and used hot glue to seal them up and this one is finished. I think this little pillow turned out absolutely adorable. Okay, on to DIY number seven. For this project, I used these wooden St. Patrick's Day decorations that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on sale. I picked out one of each of the three words, Lucky, St. Patrick's, and Shamrock. Next, I used nine of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I used Minwax wood stain in the color Dark Walnut and stained all nine of the blocks. Once the stain was dry, I used hot glue to attach three of the blocks together, hot gluing them end to end to create a base. I then repeated this step to make the other two bases. Next, I placed a dab of hot glue along the bottom of the L and the Y on the word Lucky and attached it to one of the block bases. I then repeated this step on the other two words, placing hot glue along the bottom of the words where they came into contact with the wood base and this one is finished. These were so quick and easy to make with minimal work and look absolutely adorable on a tiered tray. Moving right along to DIY number eight. For this project, I used two of these gnome figures from Dollar Tree. I used apple barrel paint in the color Sunkiss Peach to paint their faces, ears, and hands. Next, I used apple barrel paint in the color Harvest Orange to paint their beards. Then, I used apple barrel paint in the color ink to paint the belts, shoes, and bottoms of both gnomes. 
I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory to paint the eyes, and I also used the end of a smaller paintbrush and ink chalk paint to create the pupils. I used Folk Art brushed metal paint in the color brush gold to paint the buckle on this gnome's belt. Next, I used Apple Barrel paint in the color Kelly Green to paint his pants and hat. Then, I used Apple Barrel paint in the color Spring Green to paint his shirt. For this next gnome, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss to paint his pants and hat. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Celery to paint his shirt. Here's how both gnomes looked once I had them repainted. I do want to mention that I used two to three good coats of each of the paint colors. Now you could stop here, but since I'm extra, I decided to use two of these leprechaun hats from Dollar Tree. I used my heat tool to loosen up the glue holding the picks in place and remove them from the top of both hats. Next, I removed the hat band and the gold buckle. I then used some wood filler to fill in the holes on the top of the hats from where the picks were removed. You could use some lightweight spackling or some caulk to fill these in, but I had this wood filler in reach, so that's what I used. Once the wood filler was dry, I took a sanding sponge and smoothed out the top of the hat. Since I wanted these hats to sit on the gnome's head, I took a sharp utility knife and very carefully used it to remove the center of the hat, making sure that I didn't get too close to the edge and cut through to the outside. I then took some scissors and used them to loosen up and remove the styrofoam from inside the hat, being careful not to poke through the sides. This is extremely messy, but I think worth it. I will also be using the styrofoam from the hats in an upcoming project. I then repeated these steps to hollow out the other hat as well. Here is how both hats looked once I had them hollowed out so that they would fit on the gnome's heads. I used apple barrel paint in the color Kelly Green to paint one of the hats with two coats. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss to paint the other hat with two coats. Next, I removed the gold buckles from both hat bands and painted the bands with two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I then used Folk Art Brush Metal Paint in the color Brush Gold to paint both the buckles. Once everything was completely dry, I reattached the band to the hat using a small dab of hot glue to secure it in place and then reattached the gold buckle using hot glue. I then repeated these steps to reattach the other hat band and buckle to the dark green hat. Then to finish this project, I place the hats on the gnomes and this one is complete. I think this may be my favorite out of all of today's projects. I just love these little leprechauns. Let's move on to DIY number 9. For this project, I used one of these mini glass jars from Dollar Tree and some of this craft water that I picked up about a year ago from Hobby Lobby. I followed the stove top directions on the back of the box to melt down the craft water and then per the instructions, carefully place the jar inside the still hot pan. I then poured the melted craft water inside the jar until it was just under where the lid would screw on if it had one. Next, I used some apple barrel paint in the color Golden Sunset and added a little bit at a time to the water while it was still hot. I used a popsicle stick to quickly mix the color so that there would be bubbles left in the water. I also mixed in some crocus yellow paint and some folk art moon yellow to try to get the golden lager color I was going for and set it aside to allow the craft water to completely set up. I used a cotton ball from Dollar Tree to create the look of foam on the top of the beer. I took one of the cotton balls, fluffed it up a little bit, and placed it down inside the jar directly onto the craft water and that's it for this one. I think this turned out adorable, but I think next time I'm going to try mica powder to get a more true to color beer. Next up, DIY number 10. For this project, I used one of these dessert glasses from Dollar Tree. I used apple barrel paint in the color spring green to paint the inside of the glass. To do this, I poured the paint inside the glass and swirled it around to coat the inside and set it upside down to remove the excess paint and allowed it to dry overnight. Once the glass was completely dry, I took some green sand from Dollar Tree and filled the glass up almost all the way to the top. Then I took some all-purpose caulk and used it to create the whipped cream for the top of the shamrock shake. I started around the outside edge of the glass and worked my way to the center in a circular motion as I would if I was using actual whipped cream or icing. 
Next, I used one of these shamrock paper straws that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I cut off a small piece and stuck it down inside the caulk while it was still wet. I used these green and brown glass beads from Dollar Tree as sprinkles. I decided I wanted to use a mix of the dark green round beads and some of the longer dark brown beads and sprinkled them onto the top of the shake while the caulking was still wet. Then to finish off this project, I took four of the tiny shamrock jewels from this pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and placed them around the top of the shake in the whipped cream again while the caulking was still wet and set it aside for several hours until the caulk had fully set up. I am super happy with how this festive little shamrock shake turned out. Jumping right on into DIY number 11. For this project, I used one of these square wood planks from Dollar Tree. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted the plank and two of the wood cubes also from Dollar Tree. Next, I used one of the large wooden shamrocks from this pack that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used apple barrel paint in the color new shamrock to paint the front and back of the shamrock with one coat. Once the paint was completely dry, I used hot glue to attach the shamrock to the lower right corner of the plank, letting the top left leaf hang over the edge just a bit. I used my Cricut to cut out the word March in white vinyl and applied it to the left side of the plank. I also cut out the number 17 in white vinyl and applied it to the center of the shamrock. Then to finish up this quick little project, I used hot glue to attach the two wooden cubes to the back of the plank so that it would stand on its own and this one is done. On to DIY number 12. For this project, I used one of these framed signs with the beaded hangers from Dollar Tree. I started by removing the beaded hanger from the back of the sign. I also went ahead and removed the paper that was on the sign so that I could easily paint the frame. This paper does not want to take paint, so I use my usual method to remove the paper by scraping off as much as possible and then using a damp sponge to remove the rest. I used apple barrel paint in the color burnt umber to paint the front, back, and sides of the frame. Next, I used this pretty green and yellow piece of scrapbook paper from this old world winter scrapbook paper pack that I picked up a while back at Hobby Lobby. I placed a piece of scrapbook paper on the back of the frame and marked it with a pencil where I needed to cut so that it would fit nice and snug inside the frame and then cut it to size. I used a regular glue stick to adhere the scrapbook paper inside the frame. I placed the glue on the sign as well as the back of the scrapbook paper. I did cut the paper a little short so I had to add a small piece to the bottom of the sign and then place the larger piece of paper on top. Next, I removed the beads from the twine hanger and painted them with two coats of folk art brushed metal paint in the color brushed gold. Once the beads were dry, I placed them back onto the twine hanger. I also went ahead and dry brushed the frame with the brushed gold paint. I used my Cricut to cut out this design that I created in Design Space in a matte black vinyl and applied it to the scrapbook paper in the middle of the frame. Then to finish off this project, I stapled the twine hanger back onto the back of the sign. I absolutely adore this piece. It's a quote from one of my all-time favorite horror movies, but it fits in, right? Let's jump on in to DIY number 13. For this first project, I used two of these black cauldrons that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I started by removing the handles from both of the cauldrons. Next, I placed some floral foam down inside to act as a filler. Remember those pieces of foam from the hats from DIY number 8? I thought they looked like little gold nuggets, so that's what I'm turning them into. I picked out a few of the bigger chunks and placed them inside a small Ziploc bag, then poured some of the brushed gold paint on top and gently rubbed the outside of the bag to get them coated with the paint. Once I had all the pieces coated, I dumped them out on a paper towel to dry. If there happened to be any white showing, I went ahead and rubbed them against the inside of the bag so that they would be fully covered. Look at how realistic these gold nuggets look. This time I've managed to surprise myself at how well this idea turned out. I also went ahead and painted the top of the floral foam with the brushed gold paint just in case. Then to finish up this little pot of gold, I took some hot glue and carefully glued the chunks of styrofoam gold nuggets around the top of the cauldron to make it look full of gold. I would recommend a low temp glue gun for this, 
because the styrofoam does tend to bubble up and melt. I repeated this step to add the gold nuggets to the other cauldron and this one is finished. And last but not least, DIY number 14. For this project, I used this black glass cauldron that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I started by putting floral foam into the bottom. Then I used this berry mix pick that I picked up at Walmart. I cut the stems apart and arranged them in the cauldron. Next, I took these St. Patrick's Day shamrock picks that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on sale and cut them apart and arranged them in with the berry mix in the cauldron and this one is finished. Here is the final reveal of all of today's St. Patrick's Day themed minis displayed on my tiered tray. I absolutely love how all these minis came together to create a fun and festive St. Patrick's Day display. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I had a really hard time picking just one, so I'm going to go ahead and say all the Leprechaun themed minis. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. Also, please don't forget to go check out the link to the playlist in the description box below for even more spring Mardi Gras and St. Patrick's Day tiered tray decor inspiration, as well as Corey's channel. Y'all won't be disappointed in either. I'll see y'all next time.